Distinguished delegates, welcome to the, th uh, to the third part of low-cost technology crowdsourcing and public health response. Now we're focusing on uh, focus on low cost and uh, crowdsourcing. The objective is the application of low-cost technology for ecotoxicological monitoring. This should be integrated in the spatial decision support system. We can do this by providing a low-cost tracking framework implemented with open source software. We can do this with um, an open source source spots project, maybe named uh, low-cost trackmon, um, which can be registered at uh, www.sourcespot.net. And then we have an IT environment for joint development in a community of software developers and uh, environmental scientists that are um, developing this low-cost monitoring with open source software. And to whom is it provided? It's provided to the open community of practice. So the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative will benefit from um, this, this low-cost tracking uh, framework by implementing it in for example, rural areas where no monitoring is at, at the moment available. So moving from high cost to low cost, what does it mean? So when we have high cost solutions um, and move on to low cost solutions, that might affect the precision or the performance uh, of the solution. But that might, is not necessarily uh, the case because if we uh, use uh, open source software instead of commercial software, the cost might be uh, reduced, but uh, at least we can have the same results. Um, so what are the objectives for, the, for moving from high cost to low cost? So we reduce the total cost of ownership. So we applied it on the conference itself because we used the virtual participation mode so that the travel expenses are not too high and so people can join the conference without having the, um, the financial constraints uh, of traveling from A to B. Um, and the other thing is that uh, we can increase the number of people that can apply the solutions. So financial constraints are always um, a, limit, a, limitation, a limitation of application of technology. So if we can reduce the cost, more people can use it and implement it. Um, the other thing is if we have a limited uh, amount of money and we can apply a high cost solution, it might be reasonable to move from high cost to low cost as well because we can increase the temporal or spatial resolution of a low cost experiment. On this slide you can see a visualization of the financial constraints. The white bar is symbolizing the available financial resources and the high cost solution 1, solution 2 and solution 3 are exceeding the financial threshold so they cannot be applied with that available money. Low cost solution 4 and 5 are the only available solutions and they might be implemented in a water supply chain of rural communities for example. If we increase the spatial resolution of the low-cost experiments, the results can be used in a geographic information system to identify uh, spatial patterns of risk and allocate spatial resources and trigger water treatment uh, or public health warning. Also, the response could be low-tech, just like uh, solar water disinfection uh, in epidemiology uh, called SODIS which uses the PET bottles uh, with drinking water uh, and put it for six hours on the rooftop. So for spatial public health in an open community of practice, the low cost uh, uh, facilitates monitoring um, and the generation of ground order for spatial decision support system. So we increase the spatial resolution or even have monitoring where no monitoring was available before, increase the temporal solution of a monitoring system and at least access to technology 
by the financial constraints to a monitoring system. If we look on the risk and response cycle, the low cost monitoring of a water supply chain is located in the left side of the uh, risk support pillar. On the response side, the disease control or tailored allocation of medical or public health resources are triggered by public health authorities or sup water supply and management companies. Just like in the capacity building program of WHO, risk is directly linked to response. In the self-assessment framework of WHO, a high risk of infections are directly linked to the WHO improvement tools for risk reduction. In this case, the, uh, the warning of a low-cost monitoring system provides uh, a warning for the rural community itself. Aggregation of this uh, monitoring results in a geographic information system provides decision support for public health authorities or local water supply chain companies. If we have this risk map in an open source geographic information system, this aggregated risk by the low cost monitoring system and other um, variables collected by remote sensing can be used uh, for providing localized tailored risk information. And the, the upcoming technology and widely spread uh, smartphone technology with the GPS could be used for uh, getting tailored information of risk for the location where the user is at the moment. So the, G, uh, the smartphone provides the GPS coordinates to the risk mapping server based on an open source GIS and it returns the local risk and recommendations for application of resources for the user. And now we can define a GPS pseudo measurement. GPS pseudo measurement is defined as an indirect provision of sensor data without a physical sensor by using the GPS location on the mobile device. The easiest example is, is radiation. Uh, for example, in Fukushima, a smartphone cannot measure radioactivity, but by provision of a GPS location to a GIS risk mapping server that has um, the radiation map available, it can return the radiation at the GPS location and if you use that as a mobile device decision support client for public health risk, it provides options for a risk mitigation and response. The low cost monitoring example provided by Christian is just one, one, sort of, one real sensor uh, of the smartphone. Um, and if we look on a broader perspective from a generalized perspective, the types of GD, GPS pseudo measurement are the contamination of water, soil, air, the contamination of food, uh, vegetable and meat, so food, food security, radioactive radiation as public health risk, and epidemi epidemiological risk at the GPS location. What all these types of GPS pseudo measurements have in common is that they are commonly invisible for the population. So using the smartphone helps to be aware of risk and maybe take action that minimizes the risk for the individual. By implementing uh, or developing low-cost technology monitoring systems, uh, we support the crowdsourcing idea. If we look on an example like Noise Duke, the crowdsourcing idea uses the smartphone to record noise. Noise is a public health risk. And this recorded noise when you walk through a city are submitted uh, to the GIS risk, map risk mapping server. The risk mapping server creates a noise profile with many users providing this data and generates a risk map and returns the public health risk to the GPS location. So the main difference between crowdsourcing and GPS pseudo measurement is that Crowdsourcing is used to retrieve data to a GIS risk mapping server, just like low-cost monitoring, and GPS pseudo measurement provides just the GPS location and returns the public health risk to the GPS location of the smartphone user. Low-cost monitoring in the water supply chain 
could be complemented with a crowdsourcing approach where users use the smartphone to detect dead birds or dead animals at a water resort that is used as drinking water for rural communities. The snapshot with the GPS location and a timestamp are submitted to a crowdsourcing server and the crowdsourcing server with the community member of all users could return a map of other cases in that area. The crowdsourcing results of the community memory can be used by public health authorities for validation of the risk. Only public health authorities can create a public warning. The public warning creates personalized risk mitigation strategies, public awareness and in turn more uh, crowdsourcing activity for collecting data for the community memory. As Dr. Maggie Heber, who has explained in the first part of the talk, there are so many cases of chronic kidney diseases, and especially in Latin America, so that it's unethical to wait until we get the final scientific proof that uh, pesticides or other agrochemicals can contribute to the public health risk. So if we can use space technology to create economic and public health benefit, that would be an ideal situation. So if we can calculate uh, the vegetation index uh, from uh, remote sensing maps, we can detect crop health by NDVI and EVI, which are vegetation index. They go into a crop health a GIS server, open source, and provide low-tech precision farming for applying agrochemical X at rate X with augmented reality, where the people can visualize in the smartphone where to apply the agrochemicals. Beside the economic benefits of low-cost precision farming techniques with the smartphone, uh, there are other public health objectives like food security, minimized exposure to agrochemicals for farm workers and the environment, workflow optimization and self-protection of the workers, and optimize spatial patterns for the application of agrochemicals. Summary, low-cost monitoring, GPS, studio measurement and crowdsourcing. First of all, we have to mention that low cost is not low science. We have to face that the problem that financial constraints force us to consider the low cost technology. And the repetition of monitoring experiments could increase the spatial and temporal resolution. And even if the single low cost monitoring uh, tool is, has less precision, the repetition could lead to a better performance of the total system in public health service delivery. The low-cost monitoring on the risk side of the decision support system uh, can be complemented by a GPS pseudo measurement on the response side so that public awareness of the contamination of water, soil, air, of fruits, vegetables and meat for food security or radioactive radiation can be uh, provided to the public by public health authorities that have validated the risk of the community resource. Um, all these types of public health risks are not detectable directly for the public. So this GPS pseudo measurement can provide the awareness um, with the public and uh, trigger risk mitigation strategies. The low cost monitoring are uh, the sensors of the GPF pseudo measurements. And if the smartphones do not have these sensors, we need to implement the low cost monitoring system in rural water supply chains. And if you think that smartphone is only fancy IT stuff, but even then, the low cost monitoring could help to implement monitoring for water resources where monitoring wasn't possible before. So if we think in this terms of low-cost technology, then this might help to improve public health. Thank you very much to Maggie and Christian for their parts and thank you for watching our presentation.